Danganronpa is a series I've had on my mind for quite a while now. Ever since I first played the games, I've had a lot of fun discussing with other people or mentioning the series in countdowns or other videos of mine. So of course, I wanted to dedicate a whole video to the series, and there's really nothing better to do than a trial ranking video because, you know, I'm uncreative. Everyone and their mother has done one of these, so I don't really think they need much of an introduction. To clarify some stuff before I get started, this video will obviously contain spoilers for the entire series. Series. Oh well Luggo, I don't think I'm ever going to play these games so I'm just going to go ahead and watch this and spoil myself. No, don't do that. If you're interested in these games then I highly suggest that you play them, you'll more than likely enjoy them. Even if you still want to watch this, I'll have you know that this video is made for people who've already played the games in mind so I'm not going to provide much context to each of these cases. And one last thing, I'm not going to talk about the final trials of each game. Not only do I find them hard to rank amongst the other trials, but the only one I really feel like talking about is V3's final case for various reasons, and look, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyway, that's enough stalling. I've prepared a very special list for all of you, so let's get on with the show. My opinion on V3 is kind of all over the place. In some ways it's the best game in the series, and in a lot of other ways it's the worst. I get more enjoyment making fun of it rather than actually playing it. For real though, one aspect that excels at is the trials. I'll just go ahead and say that V3 definitely has the best trials in the whole series due to their creativity and how in depth they can get. Now then, if I'm talking about how great the trials in V3 are, then why am I bringing up the game at what's supposed to be the boss? Bottom entry. Uh oh. I really don't get why the third trial in each of these games is always severely flawed. Every Danganronpa game has this problem, the Ace Attorney games have this problem, heck, even Unplug Us has this problem. There's like some force in the universe desperately preventing the third case from being good, I swear. The best way to summarize V3 Case 3 is disappointing, and also mildly memeable, but mostly disappointing. The setup for the trial is really promising. Sure, it's another double murder, but they have all sorts of interesting ideas this time around, like how is the Necronomicon involved with this, and the possibility of there being two separate killers since Angie's death is the only one that actually matters. Then you get to the trial and see how they did absolutely nothing unique with it despite having so many opportunities to get creative. Angie's murder seems cool with the whole locked room mystery, and I was actually having a bit of fun there, but not only do they reveal that the Necronomicon, you know, the motive behind the whole case, didn't serve a huge role but the group quickly shifts to talking about Tenko's murder. Angie's murderer is the only blackened here, so at the time of playing this, I didn't think Tenko's murder mattered at all. Yeah, it does end up mattering at the end, but as soon as the conversation started focusing on Tenko and that stupid seance, I got really bored. Tenko's death is a lot less interesting to solve in my opinion, since it's just a small, not so complex, funny seesaw trap. Yimiko, if you don't tell your friend to stop being sexist, that I'm gonna seesaw that hoe. Like yeah, that was a recipe for man, I'd rather watch paint dry and then lick it so I can end my suffering. But then they actually go back to the interesting idea of multiple killers. Since Tinkle's murder didn't count, that brings up quite the interesting situation. Sure, it's frustrating that everyone is stupid and seemingly forgot about that one new rule, but Karekio killing Tinko and getting off scot-free, having to defend him because he isn't the blackened, and now needing to work together to find the culprit behind Angie's murder in order to survive, dude, the potential here is absolutely through the roof. Like man, I'm so engaged right now. This is such a cool idea. Mm-hmm. We should talk it out more. This case might have juicy plot twists waiting to happen. It has to be you. Are you serious? So not only did they underutilize the motive and focus on the less interesting murder, but they have Kurekio be the killer for both Tenko and Angie? Every opportunity that this trial had to be unique was absolutely wasted. Uh, there are so many possibilities to work with using this setup. Having the culprit be different for the two victims and having Kurekio survive this trial and force everyone to live alongside a killer. Or if you rework the whole case, 
a bit, maybe they could have had Tenko and Angie die at around the same time, have two culprits, and once you find both of them, you have to determine who killed who first. Maybe put that Necronomicon to use, or do something to really enhance the occult feeling of this murder? Have the murder weapon be a popsicle stick? Oh, look, my point is that this trial had so much potential and so many ways to be creative, and it could have been one of the best trials in the whole series, but instead, they took the plain boring way out of this. Grecchio wasn't even that surprising as a killer. Ever since the whole seance, he was really suspicious. And then he starts breaking down before it was revealed that he killed Angie too. It's like they're trying not to have any sort of surprise. That scrum debate literally had no stakes to it. If Shuichi's side lost, then that would have just saved everyone like 20 minutes. Half of the trial is boring, the culprit isn't very shocking and actually kinda obvious, and I really don't care about him. Miko's development at all. They focus on two uninteresting characters and one irritating one, and it does no good for any of them. Himiko just becomes slightly less bored, and this trial didn't change my opinion on Angie or Tenko at all. But even though I don't care about that development, I wouldn't mind if the trial was actually fun, which it could have been, but it wasn't. It's to the point that the only sort of value this trial has for me is ironic value. Some of the interactions here are good, and intentional or not, there are a lot of funny things about it, like Kurekio's incest motive or the seesaw effect. Kurekio is like the number one character in gaming I like the most ironically. Like Kurekio, what was your plan? If you just killed Angie, then you would have gotten away with it. It was practically rigged in your favor. But no, you just had to go use the funny seesaw because funny seesaw go... But, uh, yeah, if I'm making fun of stupid stuff in a case and that's all it has going for it, then that says a whole lot. Alright, so we've gotten the one really bad trial out of the way. Yeah, that's the only trial in the series I consider to be outright bad. Well, that's unless if we're including a certain finale, but that epic rant will have to be saved for another time. Anyway, let's move on to trials in the yellow area. So out of every trial, Danganronpa 2 Case 3 is probably the most hated, and I can understand why. At first, I'm going to give off some reasons as to why I don't completely dislike it. For one, I thought it was at least entertaining, like I've got more enjoyment from sticking crayons up my nose than playing through V3 Case 3. The plan was actually pretty fun to piece together. It's really creative. The idea of the killer, Mikon, messing around with the crime scene after it had already been seen is really cool, and having her fake the autopsy on Ibuki was a really clever part of the trial. That's where all of the positives end, though. While I think the plan is cool in concept, it could have been handled better in execution. Like I said, it's still kind of fun, but certain parts of it feel pretty underdeveloped. They try to link together that stupid Wizard of Monomy movie with the crime scene, but it's really forced, and I didn't even remember that they did that until I rewatched this trial. It's like a YouTuber insisting that some part in a game or movie has some message when it's just them overanalyzing things. I am going to regret saying that later. A bigger example of this case feeling underdeveloped is Hiyoko. It should feel natural that Hiyoko gets killed by Mikon, but Mikon's primary target was Ibuki. Hiyoko was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Her death feels shoehorned when it really shouldn't. Apparently this is because Fuyuhiko was supposed to die instead, but then the devs realized that would be stupid considering that he got all that character development in the previous trial, so I guess you know what that means. Seriously, do they even t Siri, shut up. Seriously, as far as I'm aware, they don't even talk about the weapon used to kill Hiyoko. I'm under the assumption that was an old hot dog at this point. But then, it was the biggest sin that this trial committed. And if you think that I'm going to talk about that huge stretch in logic, then look up literally any other trial ranking. I don't care about dumb stuff like logic. I'm referring to the send-offs of each of the characters that died. Hiyoko was barely acknowledged as mentioned earlier, but Mikon got even worse. Mikon was my least favorite character in the series until Samugi started sucking Shuichi's finger, and giving her this bad send-off didn't help. The way she acts due to the despair disease is supposed to be creepy, but... It's more annoying than anything. And finally, there's Ibuki. I saw her death coming from a mile away, and while I was going to miss her a lot, I was excited to see her get a good send-off. 
Yeah, she's barely acknowledged too. And that really sucked because Ibuki was my favorite character in the game up to that point. And if they just gave her a good send off, then I could have easily put this trial at least a little bit higher. That's honestly what bothers me the most about this trial. I, I know it's weird since everyone else seems to dislike it for other reasons, but man, seeing my favorite character get so much disrespect just hurts, dude. Because of how this trial handles her death, I feel kind of unjustified whenever saying she's such a great character and stuff. Man, maybe people are onto something whenever they rank this trial at the bottom. I have a feeling that the midpoint of these games is when the developers just stop caring because, wow, all of these third cases are bad one way or the other. Yeah, this might be a bit of a controversial take, but I'm going to pair Danganronpa 1 case 3 with the rest of the third cases. Granted, it is definitely superior to them, but accomplishing that is easier than getting a participation award. I'd like to go ahead and get some of my positive thoughts out of the way. I'm doing this for now because it'll be fun to talk crap about it later. Now, this trial is actually actually pretty entertaining when first playing through the game. It's the first time there's a double murder in the series, and the circumstances surrounding said double murder are crazy. With the bodies randomly being transported all over the place while chaos ensues in the hunt for whoever is in the funny robot costume, seems like a great setup for the trial. A setup that goes in vain. Why? Because the good chunk of this case is pretty obvious, including the killer, Celeste. They completely botched Celeste here. Once a great smart character completely loses any sense of subtlety she once had. She spends most of the trial accusing Yasuhiro of the murder, who's an obvious red herring, and trying to devalue Makoto's evidence. And sure, other culprits in the series do do that, but Celeste does nothing but that this entire trial. She is legitimately the most obvious culprit in the entire series, and the only reason I wasn't 100% certain it was her was because of the mystery behind Hifumi's pants, I, I mean Hifumi's dead body suddenly shifting locations. But as soon as they clear up that Hifumi had faked his death, yeah, there's absolutely no excuse for you having suspicions on anyone but Celeste. Even if she wasn't so blatant, it's not like this case has much else going for it anyway aside from complexity. The characters have pretty weak interactions here, and there are almost no memorable moments aside from Hifumi's aforementioned pants, of course. I'd honestly say that this is the least V-watchable trial in this series. I mean, sure, the other two may be worse, but I enjoy watching V3K3 way more than this because of some of its positive attributes. It's still lower though due to inexcusable mispotential. But yeah, this paired with Celeste being a super obvious culprit and having a weak motivation makes this trial pretty dull, all things considered. It makes Apollo Justice look like the most vague and cryptic game out there, like holy crap. Like I said though, the first playthrough is definitely good, mainly being carried by the complex murder, and Celeste's breakdown is really great and one of the few qualities of her as a culprit. But aside from that, this trial is pretty weak. I find it funny how Celeste is supposed to be really smart, but in this trial, she ends up being more stupid than the person she's trying to frame. Okay, now we finally have all the not-so-good trials out of the way, so we can start talking about some actually decent stuff. A Donkey Rampa 1 Case 5 is another example of a trial that is mainly only good when first playing through it. However, it doesn't really have any particularly bad aspects to it, so I can't really lump it in with the previous three. I mean, if you asked me whenever I first played the series, then I'd probably rank this trial a lot higher, but over time I've come to realize that this trial doesn't really have a whole lot going for it. Though, at the same time, it doesn't really have much going against it either. It's just a bunch of false evidence cobbled together by Monokuma to make a fake trial to get Kyoko killed off, and uh, yeah, it definitely does feel like that. Although, it does set up quite the interesting dilemma. I mean, everyone besides Makoto and Kyoko has an alibi for when the murder occurred, so it really feels like these two are having an epic back and forth debate trying to disprove the other's innocence. I love that Kyoko is way more hostile because of this. At the same time though, it really makes you wonder if Kyoko actually killed someone, so when the choice finally comes to determine whether or not she's the killer, I can't blame someone for picking either option. Don't vote her off though, because then everyone's screwed. If you vote me, you're throwing the fucking game and you need to uninstall. I have no clue how well this is going to sit with a lot of people, because I know this trial has its fans, 
but Danganronpa 2 Case 2 was one of my least favorite trials in the series for a little bit. First off, the motive. I felt pretty mixed on Twilight Syndrome murder case, and I still do to this day. On one hand, it's a really cool idea, and the old game aesthetic leads to it being pretty freaking eerie, but at the same time, the impact it has on the trial still kinda confuses me, and it's the main focus of the first half of the trial. Precisely why I don't like the first half of the trial. Mainly because the murder in the game isn't all that interesting and downright stupid at times. Ibuki is very very epic, but her pebble theory being correct, it's just, I don't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't believe there's a fine line between stupid and creative, and I didn't even finish drawing it before you crossed it anyway. As for the actual murder, oh man, I can't believe we're actually giving attention to something important. It's okay. I thought this part of the trial was a lot more fun, but nothing too notable. However, then we come to the part I feel the most mixed about. The very end, where Pekko is revealed to be the killer, yet calls herself a tool used by Fuyuhiko, making him the actual killer. On one hand, this scene is pretty emotional for Fuyuhiko because he hasn't shown any sort of care for anyone, yet has a very deep connection with Pekko. And on the other hand, I'm frustrated with it all because damn it, Pekko is really living up to her new self-appointed status. The amount of times she says it, paired with the fact that she actually thought this stupid stunt would work, really make this scene less impactful than it could have been. It's a shame too, because Fuyuhiko and Pekko's relationship seems really interesting, but this is mainly what we see of it. One character comes out a whole lot better, and the other comes out as a tool. Anyway, all the frustrating aspects aside, upon re-watching this trial, I decided putting it much lower than this would be pretty harsh. The bad aspects about it aren't that bad to be fair, and it's still fairly entertaining. So I guess it's actually pretty decent, and I'm happy to say that. Okay, this trial is really simple, so there isn't much to say here. You might be a little surprised to see the very first case in the series higher than everything else I've mentioned up till this point, but over time, I've started to respect the more simple trials such as this for various reasons. Mainly because it's pretty fun to rewatch due to so many characters being alive, so it's a really memorable trial. Not only that, but I think this is a really good introduction case to the series. Like, I was having the absolute time of my life when I first played through this. It's easy enough that that you don't get confused, but it's challenging enough that you feel really smart when you really aren't. I mean, sure, for the most part it's pretty obvious, but a couple of sections make you think outside the box a bit. There's really not much else to say aside from that. There have been a lot of cases from the first game on the lower end of this list. It's a common opinion that one has the weakest cases, and I agree with that, though that certainly doesn't make it the worst game in my opinion since it excels in other departments. Anyway, Case 4 seems to have some pretty big fans, and while I can understand why they like it, I personally don't have any strong opinions on it myself. I think my favorite thing about the whole case is that it's really just a simple suicide, but because of Monokuma wanting to make things more interesting and how divided everyone is, the whole trial becomes way more difficult to solve. I really love that about the first game, how over time everyone slowly loses trust in each other due to the current circumstances. I mean, if I was locked in a school with a murderous teddy bear telling everyone to kill each other, not only would I probably listen to him, but I'd also probably start getting anxious of everyone else. That and Sakura's suicide message at the very end is actually really impactful. I had stronger feelings about a certain other case in the game, but this one is still solid, has a unique idea, and captures one of my favorite aspects about Danganronpa 1. My opinions on all of the trials tend to fluctuate a lot, because there are certain qualities that won't be as effective on a second viewing. One trial in particular is the perfect example of this. V3 Case 1. Despite it getting a pretty good ranking, I actually have some mixed feelings on it, uh, mainly leaning towards the positive, of course. To give you an idea, this trial was originally in my top 3. Yeah. Quite a few problems have come to light over time. This whole trial seems like a really good idea, but then you realize later that maybe it wasn't. Kinda like eating at Taco Bell. I'm of course referring to Kaede being the culprit. Honestly, I think this is a really good idea and it was handled pretty well for the most part. Like, I remember whenever the selection screen came up, I got it wrong like three times and then thought, okay, maybe Kaede could have done it, but th there's no way they would actually go through with something like that. No doubt about it. Wait, what? 
and for the rest of the trial up until her execution, I seriously did not think they were going to go through with it. It just absolutely blew my mind. I remember seeing screenshots of the player playing as Shuichi, but I just thought this was one of those games where you switch between two characters every now and then or something. So basically, I got spoiled on this twist and I didn't even realize it. But thinking about it more, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Because I think Kaede would have made for a better protagonist. She's a lot more unique and is a genuinely sweet character. Shuichi's good, but he kind of blends in with the other two protagonists, despite being better than them in my opinion. For a long time now, I've thought that Shuichi and Kaede should have swapped roles. The ultimate detective being the main character sounds more natural and would have made for a better twist to see that he actually wasn't going to be the main character. And plus we'd get a more refreshing character as our protagonist. But whatever, for what they did go for, they still did a good job. The execution is good, it's just I'm not sure whether or not I like the long lasting impact this has on the rest of the game. Though I've seen some people rank the trial pretty low because they liked Kaede and they were sad to see her go, therefore this trial is automatically bad. I think that stuff is stupid. Like, whenever you play a game like this, you really should go in expecting literally anyone to die. You can complain about how they handled your favorite character's death, I did that earlier, it's just I don't think that you should complain just because they died. But anyway, Kaede's death is really strong, for better or for worse. The scene with Shuichi in the lab after the trial really set a strong first impression of the game. Also, it ruined Claire de Lune for me, I, I can't listen to that song anymore without Without thinking about this trial. Imagine wanting to listen to classical music and you get spoilers for a stupid weeb visual novel instead. Unlike the previous case, the first trial in Danganronpa 2 has actually grown on me a bit. I already did like it, but then I realized everything about this trial is just really good. Despite it being the first trial in the game, the plan behind it has a lot more complexity than expected, and I think it's because the devs sort of realize that you've more than likely have had experience with the previous game, so you don't have to have your hand held throughout this one. Outside of the plan, the whole case is chaotic as well, partially thanks to Nagito. I wasn't a huge fan of him at the time, but I gotta say, he certainly does add to this whole roller coaster of events. And finally, there's Teru Teru being the culprit. I didn't really find it all that surprising, but that's okay considering that the rest of the trial up until this point was fun to solve. Also because I think most of us can agree that his motive is surprisingly sympathetic. Yeah, he was sorta kinda maybe a pervert and or sexual predator, and he did poke a lot of holes into one of your friends and found great pleasure in doing so, but I can't help but kinda feel bad for him in the end. The whole interaction with his mother and him wanting to see her again was actually really endearing, and it served as a good send-off for him. When something ends on a high note, I I tend to remember it more fondly, and vice versa, hence why my opinions on Celeste might come off as more negative while I see Tero Tero in a better light nowadays. I don't absolutely love this case, but it does well in so many departments that it's hard not to appreciate it. Real quick, I'd like to take credit for something. The recent appreciation of V3 Case 2. This trial always seemed a tad underrated, like people would just put it around the middle of their rankings and say, Oh yeah, it, it's good, and uh, yeah. But no no bro, this case is epic. It's a heck of a lot more than just good, it's great and refreshing, which is exactly what this series needed at this point. The murder itself is so creative, and the body discovery is my absolute favorite in the entire series. The trial following that is great too, not only being unique, but also just feeling like a complete package. We've got great interactions from a lot of characters, not including Himiko, Shuichi and Kaito's partnership being showcased, and an absolute blast of a trial to solve. Also, figuring out everyone's alibi at the time of the murder has never been so fun. Though, I hate to admit it, I don't really have a whole lot else to say aside from what I just talked about. I mean, I don't know, I guess if you wanted to detract from this trial, then you could make the argument that this whole convoluted plan was unnecessary because if Kurumi just left Ryoma in the sink, then, well, I don't think she would have been caught. You know, maybe she's not as smart as I thought. Oh yeah, speaking of Kurumi, that's kind of what leads me to the only point I really have against the trial. Her breakdown is really good and her execution is my favorite, but her motive is pretty out there and not particularly investing. Like, she's the prime minister of everything. 
Uh, that's quite the bombshell for the end of the trial. He asked Kirumi to make this country great again. <laughs> so, I think I get what they were going for here. I didn't catch on at first, but basically it's supposed to show how Ryoma and Kirumi are kinda like equal opposites. Ryoma has pretty much nothing to live for, while Kirumi has a whole country to take care of. Her life is valuable. I think that's kinda cool, but they did something similar to this earlier in the series, and I think it was way more impactful there because both of the characters were better, and it was a lot more believable. Yeah, Kurumi is pretty boring. Uh, but hey, now you know her love suite event is the most important one, because who wouldn't want to get in bed with the Prime Minister? One of my many problems with V3 had to do with the characters. They're mostly just okay, and the ones that are notable don't get to see their potential fulfilled. Not to mention, some of the characters are way too plot important, which does make for good characters, but it also makes the other not important characters look really worthless. I mean, yeah, there were some characters in the first two games that were definitely important to the story, such as Kyoko, but here it's so blatantly obvious that Shuichi, Kaito, Maki, and Kokichi are the most important characters in this story. With all that said though, there's one trial in particular where the character interaction is the best aspect of it. V3 Case 4 might have some similarities to Danganronpa 2 Case 4, but they both excel in different areas. For one, this might be a slightly unpopular opinion, but I didn't actually care that much about the virtual world. A lot of the puzzles involving its layout aren't that difficult if you've played enough video games to understand technical stuff such as loading zones and looping screens. And the murder itself isn't really that interesting, aside from that TOILET PAPER OF COURSE! So you might be wondering, oh, why is this case so high up on the list if I thought the murder itself was just decent? Well, the answer is quite simple, the character interactions. This has not only some of the best interactions in the game, but the entire series. Kokichi deliberately tries to get on everyone's nerves to get them to hate him even more once his big plan gets revealed, and his back and forth with Kaito get really heated. And then there's going to our murderer for this trial. Gonta being the culprit behind Miyu's death wasn't super surprising to me. What made it interesting though was figuring out if Gonta really was the culprit and why he did what he did. He's just way too nice to do something like this under normal circumstances, so you know there's something wrong here. Once the clues start coming together that Gonta was manipulated by Kokichi and forgot all about it, the whole feel of the trial becomes a lot more tense. Some might say that everyone's particularly kind Kaito's stubbornness to prove Gonta's innocence can get annoying, but I think that's what really makes this trial for me. It goes from everyone not believing Kokichi to a Discord argument. Unlike stupid stuff like that though, it's some of the best display of writing and voice acting in the whole series. Even if this line from Maki always makes me wince. Wait, if you don't shut your mouth, then I'll shut it for you, permanently. <laughs> The way this trial was handled is absolutely spectacular, and I can completely understand someone putting this higher or even saying it's their favorite. Gunta just want to help everyone, like a true gentleman. Next up is one of the most beloved trials in the series. Danganronpa 2 Case 4 is simply put, genius. The motive is genius, the plan is genius, and everyone locked up here isn't. In fact, they're more stupid than usual. This trial is often compared to V3 Case 4, but while that one is based more around technological stuff and programming, DR2 Case 4 focuses around the structure of the funhouse and how it was used to kill, which I personally find more interesting. This might just be the hardest trial in the series due to the confusing nature of Strawberry House and Grape House, but that's what makes solving it all the more satisfying. It's a really good determining factor of whether or not someone is smart or a complete moron, which I can appreciate due to the current state of this fandom. However, that's not my favorite part. Can we talk about how great Gundam is here? He found out the secret and layout of the two houses, killed Nekomaru using his knowledge about the structure, and set false evidence to trick everyone into getting the layout wrong. I'd argue that his plan was the most intelligent out of every other killer because of how he used every tool possible to great effectiveness. Well, aside from that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. Speaking of Gundam, he's one of my favorite culprits. His whole motive was seeing everyone give up on their lives and practically accept death, encouraging him to commit his crime. 
or at least he says so. It's implied that he secretly wanted to save his friends, and I'd like to think Nekomaru caught on too. Think about how awesome that is. Everyone realizes that they're going to die of starvation if they don't kill each other, so two buff dudes meet at the tower and fight to the death to save everyone. That's freaking badass, dude. Oh yeah, and while I'm at it, I'd like to mention that I didn't really care that much for Nekomaru at first, but this chapter made me like him a lot more. And then, they go ahead and kill him off. It was one huge trick to make me care for him right before he died. That's nasty, bro. It feels so good for there to finally be a good send-off after they screwed up the previous two. I'm not a diehard Gundam fan or anything, but everything involving him on top of the phenomenal plan and execution makes it really hard not to love this trial. Alright, this top 3 is going to be a bit weird, so uh, I've got some explaining to do, specifically about why the 5th case in 2 is number 3. This is the fan favorite trial, and if you use process of elimination then you can determine what the top 2 are. And once you realize what those top 2 are, then you might find it weird that I put this lower than them. This is the most beloved trial and for a good reason. It has a great intense build up followed by a horrifying body discovery that really makes you wonder if any of the remaining survivors could have possibly done something like this. Though the conversation in the trial quickly shifts over to how it could be a suicide, a really clever one at that. The way Nagito set up this elaborate trap is so befitting of his character, and figuring out every little detail about it is so much fun. But that's not what people love this trial most for, no. They leave you in the dark about certain things such as the poison, and when they come back to bite you later, it stings like hell. And we probably just didn't notice it. Like maybe the container was hiding with the fire grenade fragments. <gasps> oh no! Well, I never thought fire safety could be so terrifying, but here you go. That being said, I've seen some people bring up issues with the fire bombs and the poison. That being that since he wanted the traitor, Chiaki, to kill him, and he didn't do any other setup for the fire bombs besides putting poison in one, he was relying way too much on luck. And the fact that that plan somehow ended up working is a huge stretch even for this game's standards. Now, I guess I can kinda see where people are coming from when they make that point, but at the same time, they've already established Nagito's reliance on luck, and it always makes for some pretty unsettling moments, so I didn't really mind it here. Plus, I think it's totally fitting to the rest of his plan and his character. Now then, if you're wondering why this trial isn't higher, especially considering the other two I haven't talked about yet, then let me elaborate a bit. I think this trial is great, fun, and a absolute roller coaster of emotion. And Nagito and Chiaki are really good characters with great send-offs. However, even though I still do like them, I don't like them as much as everyone else does. So even though I think their send-offs were handled very well, I wasn't as heartbroken as other people. Is that a stupid reason to put this trial a little bit lower? I mean, yeah, maybe a little bit, but hey, everyone else has already sung the praise of this trial to the high heavens, and I'm not sure if I could really add any more to that anyway. Now, you wanna know what's really sad? Since Chiaki is the traitor, that means that she isn't a real person. So in other words, gamer girls really don't exist. I knew there was something off about her talent. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you know what's up next, and maybe I'm overselling the living crap out of this trial, but shut up. Up next is Danganronpa 1 Case 2. From what I've seen, this seems to be a lot of people's favorite trial from the first game, but even then, I've never seen anyone rank it this high. To be fair though, this was a last minute switch, so I may or may not regret this later. But as for now, let me explain why I think it deserves to be this high up. At this point in the game, I was really liking it, but I wasn't entirely drawn in yet. That was until I played this trial for the first time. And that's because this case is excellent in almost every way. The plan is way more complicated than the previous one, and there are way more twists and turns. You've got Genocide Jack introduced as the ultimate red herring, and this is also where Byakuya starts showing how intimidating he can be. That's probably my favorite aspect of this trial, the characters. While the second game may have my favorite cast, I can't deny that this trial probably has my favorite interaction 
reactions in the series. Everyone gets a good moment here. Even characters who I didn't care about, such as Hufumi, occasionally had a really funny line. All of this makes for a really fun trial on your first viewing, and my favorite one to rewatch. And even after all of that, we still have the cherry on top. The victim and the culprit. I felt more invested in the trial than the first one because I was really hurt to see Chihiro go. And then the culprit crushes my heart as well. Amondo was my favorite character up till this point, and I did think he was a little suspicious because of a certain line of dialogue during the investigation. So while I was happy to have caught on to that before he was revealed as the culprit, it still was an absolute kick to the balls that he was the killer here. The way both Chihiro and Mondo's stories are told are unbelievably emotional, and the way they seamlessly tie together is unlike any other trial. The motive for the trial, the worst secrets of every student, fits so well with these two characters. Remember what I said earlier about how Ryoma and Kurumi are kinda like equal opposites? Well, the same thing kind of applies to Chihiro and Mondo, except here it's a lot more impactful. Chihiro is a physically weak person, while Mondo is a mentally weak person. And when their secrets are threatened to be revealed, they react differently because of their insecurities. Chihiro sees a chance to finally improve himself, while Mondo feels stressed, which leads him to make the biggest mistake of his life. Never has a motive been so intertwined with the characters and the overall chapter. Chapter 2 as a whole feels like it's telling a little story in the background with both Chihiro and Mondo, and I love that. I've seen some people ignore all this because of a certain aspect that I should not get into, and I think that's doing the trial a great disservice. Personally, I adore everything about this trial, and that ending will always remain strong to me. I know that ranking it so high might be unjustified, but I still get so much out of this trial to this day, so I'm sorry if it seems like I'm gushing a bit. It just really showed me that this series would be something special, and that's why I hold it so close to my heart. You know, I could do some epic build-up if I wanted to, but by simply using the process of elimination, it should be no secret what my favorite trial is at this point. V3 Case 5 is nothing short of spectacular, and the perfect showcase of the game's strongest elements. I was honestly thinking about putting the previously mentioned trial at the top instead, but thinking about it more, I don't think I have a better answer to the question of what my favorite trial is. What I like most about this trial is the excellent Excellent concept and execution. That concept, of course, being an elaborate plan set up by Kokichi and Kaito to make the victim of this trial unknown. That's an amazing idea, and they take so many steps to trip you up along the way. I legitimately felt a part of my soul die during the body discovery. And yeah, you could say that Trial 6 has soul-crushing attributes as well, but th that's for different reasons. But yeah, this unknown victim idea works brilliantly. Despite it heavily being implied to be Kaito under the press, I I knew at this point that whenever the game presented ideas like this, that they'd always follow through with them. Well, I mean, I guess unless if you're Case 3, hey yo! This time, however, they do so much to convince you that Kaito is really dead that I actually fell for it. Though I can understand if others didn't. It's such a deceptive trial, and adding to that is the person in the Exosol. Throughout the trial, the game obviously wants you to think it's Kokichi in there, but occasionally they tease you with Kaito butting into the conversation, which just adds to the confusion. A very good confusion, to be clear. Kaito's role here is so great, with him pretending to be Kokichi and fooling everyone. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Kaito may be stupid, but he still manages to trick everyone one improvised or not. My favorite part is when he tries to convince Shuichi and Maki to present evidence that shows he's alive, only for them to realize that there is no evidence that supports that theory. So they have no choice but to quell any sort of suspicion that he isn't dead. Now I guess this could have been part of the script, however I would like to think that this was Kaito saying something on the spot. It's all just so strange, why is Maki acting so off? Who's inside the Exosol? Who's under the press? This trial is insane in so many different ways that it's almost scary. Like, the only point I have against it is that the surviving cast of V3 is, uh, kinda bad. 
So it's a good thing that they only focus on the good characters here. Uh, seriously though, Himiko, Kibo, and Samugi are actually decent here, while everyone else is great. Shuichi and Maki have an intense back and forth for the first half of the trial, which just makes Maki more suspicious. And Kaito and Kokichi are amazing too. And so are their send-offs, not just because they're two of my favorite characters in the series, but because of just how satisfying they are. Kokichi especially, I mean, he lied about being the mastermind so he could destroy the killing game by taking away everyone's motivation to continue going along with it, and also by creating an unsolvable murder to force Monokuma to break the rules of his own game. Not something you would have expected from someone like him. I guess he really was a huge liar after all but in a different way. You can debate about whether or not he's sympathetic for this reason, but I just find it interesting to see that there's more depth to him than originally thought. There's a lot more nuance to him than what he's been portraying throughout the rest of the game. As for Kaito, I've said just about everything I've wanted to say about him at this point. I even have another video just for more detail if you want that. He's excellent in this trial as previously stated, and his send-off is perfect. Like, he worked with the person he hated the absolute most and almost fulfilled their goal but his sidekick was just way too smart. I can't really think of much else to say aside from how I think every aspect of this trial is great one way or the other. The characters, the mystery, the murder, and the ending are all fantastic. Definitely my favorite ending to any trial. The way they handled the deaths here was great and so respectful. They seriously could have ended the game- uh, series, shut up. They seriously could have ended the game right here because I had no idea how they could follow up on this. And I think it's pretty clear already that they shouldn't have even tried. And that's okay though, we can just pretend that the game ends here. Some people compare this case to Danganronpa 2's fifth case, and while I do see the similarities and criticisms because of that, I personally much prefer this one. I like the victim and culprit more, and this unsolvable murder has an even more interesting core idea. So I guess in some ways, this is kind of like my ideal version of that case. Now I've also seen my fair share of major detractors here. I think it's okay to not like it as much as me or other people, but then I see some go too far in the opposite direction. I've seen some people put this trial at the bottom for some pretty asinine reasons. I'm not saying it's exempt from criticism, I mean I personally just like it because it ticks every box of what I look for in a Danganronpa trial, but when you put it so low for the little list of reasons, then it makes you look like a desperate contrarian. I don't know, at that point it just feels like you're lying to yourself. But I guess that really shouldn't concern me, because at the end of the day, it'll never change my opinion. I loved playing through this trial, and I love thinking about all the great ideas presented throughout it. Despite literally being completely off script in the world of the game, it's still my number one pick. So yeah, that was my super epic ranking video. This will probably end up being my longest video to date, so I won't keep you here for much longer. I had a lot of fun making this, and yeah, I am afraid of the potential responses I may or may not get. But hey, I'd like to think that it was worth it. I'm Luggled Logician, and thank you very much for watching.